Coming up on today's Airborne. An experimental SpaceX vehicle is lost in a Texas test flight. Still fighting, the AMA files petitions for review of FAA's interpretive rule. And registration is now open for the Redbird Migration Conference. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. In an initial report, ANN's space correspondent Wes Olachewski said that on the evening of August 22nd, a SpaceX Falcon 9R veered off of its planned flight profile and was automatically destroyed by the flight termination system at their McGregor, Texas test facility. In the video clips recorded by onlookers, the Falcon 9R appears to climb normally to a safe altitude. Then the vehicle suddenly pitches over and the flight termination system takes over. In other words, boom. Parts can then be seen raining down to the ground. Shortly thereafter, Elon Musk, the SpaceX founder and chief designer, tweeted, quote, rockets can be tricky, end quote. Since no one has ever tried what SpaceX is doing with the Falcon 9R, no one else has failed. So if SpaceX handles this event right, they will not have failed either. The Academy of Model Aeronautics has filed a petition for review in the United States Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit, challenging the FAA's interpretation of the special rule for model aircraft, which was published in the Federal Register on June 25th. The AMA believes that the FAA's interpretive rule is contrary to the text and intent of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012, and that it violates Congress's specific prohibition of any new rules or regulations regarding model aircraft that are operated pursuant to a community-based organization standards. The FAA's purported interpretation effectively establishes an array of new regulations that model aircraft enthusiasts have never been subject to in the past, and it poses an immediate and direct hardship on model aviation. You're watching Airborne. When we come back, registration is open for the Redbird Migration Conference. Stay tuned after these messages. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Aero-sport.net. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Get ready to flock to the Redbird Migration Conference again. Registration is now open for the annual Migration Conference, which is hosted by Redbird. The conference will be held at the Redbird Skyport, San Marcos Municipal Airport in San Marcos, Texas, on October the 28th through the 29th. Redbird's founder and chairman, Jerry Gregoire, said the Redbird Skyport is a privately funded public laboratory dedicated to researching methods that improve the effectiveness and economics of flight training, with the ultimate goal of revitalizing our industry and ensuring its future well-being. Conferences and forums at the Redbird Migration will explode with usable information about how to improve the business of general aviation and GA training. Current projects under development are experimental learning and simulators via interactive gaming, the all-diesel training fleet, and the use of motion simulation to reduce primary helicopter training times. In previous years, ANN has broadcast this event live because of its importance, and this year will be no exception. Stay tuned for more information. We at Aero TV have some 2,000 programs webcast to cyberspace, so sometimes it's fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, 
and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. It's just the coolest thing ever. It's just, I can't say enough good things about it. It's just awesome. In this video, you'll see a show that can only take place at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh. From 2011, we take another look at the famous Night Air Show. Search EAA Night Air Show 2011 on Aero TV's news channel. Preparations are underway for the 42nd annual Copper State Fly-In and Aviation Expo, scheduled for October 23rd through the 25th at the Casa Grande Municipal Airport in Arizona. The theme for this year's event is Keeping the Dream Alive. More than 500 aircraft were on the field last year, with attendance topping 6,100 from 12 countries and 37 states. This was about 10% more than the 2012 fly-in. Copper State Forums also drew the most attendees in five years. Copper State President Stephen Bass said, quote, This year we're expanding our youth aviation programs, and we're also expecting more avionics vendors and flight schools to be on hand. End quote. Visit the Copper State website for more information. Stay tuned after the break to find out why no flyless rules are set for a change. You're watching Airborne. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. Travelers who find themselves on the federal government's frustrating no-fly list may soon have a new procedure for requesting their removal from the list. A federal judge recently ruled that it was unconstitutional for there to be no meaningful way for a person to challenge their no-fly status. According to reports, the Justice Department said the process would be changed in the next six months as a result of that ruling. There are a few details about those pending changes, according to the report. A court filing earlier this month indicated that the government will, quote, endeavor to increase transparency for certain individuals denied boarding who believe they are on the no-fly list, end quote. There are some 48,000 people on the list, but believe it or not, it's government policy to neither confirm nor deny that any individual is on it. Iceland's meteorological office has issued a statement raising its risk level due to a possible eruption of the Bardadar Bunga volcano, which is part of Iceland's largest volcano system. Iceland is a hotspot of volcanic activity, having about 130 active and inactive volcanic mountains. There has been no major eruption so far, but a small lava eruption has been reported. The Meteorological Office said that there had been increased seismic activity in the vicinity of the volcano over the past few days. The Bardadar Bunga aviation color code was changed to red over the weekend, indicating that a significant ash emission is likely. In 2010, an eruption of another Icelandic volcano sent ash into the atmosphere for miles, leading to a major disruption of European air travel for six days. U.S. Senator James Enhoff makes no apologies for his airplane, a Vans RV-8 that was in Oshkosh this summer. The Republican senator has released a campaign ad that shows him flying the airplane and explaining how it helps him stay in touch with his constituents across the state. Enhoff says in the spot, quote, I can hit more Oklahoma towns in a day, listening and helping more people in a day, than I could in a week of driving, end quote. 435 visits so far. Look up. Jim might be heading your way now. As Enhoff executes an aileron roll in his vans, he's heard saying, I'm Jim Enhoff, and I not only approve this message, I enjoy it. Enhoff is a key proponent of general aviation in the U.S. Senate and has taken part in major legislation to improve the climate for general aviation at the federal level. 
Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And be advised, there are some great upgrades and changes coming soon to Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.